Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, and this is episode 78. Um, I'm outside. It's a beautiful evening tonight, nice and cool. Um, I'm on a little earlier than usual. Uh, I've just been so busy. Man. I've been working on this book. I I have this deadline that I, I have to make this deadline. I will. I will. Um, it just takes a, a hell of a lot of tracking you know, but uh, it's coming out really good. I'm really excited about this book. Um, you guys definitely want to make sure you grab your hand, you know, get a copy of, you know, all three of them, actually. It's uh, books one, two, and three. Yes, yes, y'all. Um, definitely going to be, it's already a classic. Um, I think you guys going to really enjoy it. Uh, I mentioned this before. It's about a Puerto Rican um rapper trying to get a deal in New York City in the 80s which if you weren't black back in those days it was really difficult um, because it was all about the, the look it was all about the culture um, the the authenticity of of the music and the vibes and you know so uh, and the guy goes through and he goes through his changes to get to get this deal so I, I don't want to spoil it because you know it, I can actually spoil it in like two seconds <laughs> Um, but but you uh, you guys will will pretty much uh, vibe with this, and uh, it's it's for it's not just for you know Puerto Ricans, even though the character's Puerto Rican, but a lot of you guys uh, can relate. I mean, especially if you were raised in the '80s, you probably have a got you know some pretty decent experience uh, with lo- with all of this. So um, other than that, everything else is cool. Um, just. Uh, I try not to watch the news. Um, I know what's going on though, because I have a wife that watches it pretty much all day long, and I'm glad. I'm glad one of us watch it. You know, she at least gives us the heads up. Like they're talking about, they're gonna send every household a thousand dollars. I mean, that's cool. I don't know what it's gonna do, but I'm sure it's gonna help several, you know, quite a few people. Um, that's cool. I would never know it's coming. That thing would have came in the mail. I would be like, oh shit, what the hell is this? Say a thousand dollars. You know, so um, I hope you guys are staying safe. Try to stay in, man. I mean, you know, we can play with this all we want. We can say, oh, it's, it's all bullshit. It's all hype, you know. But then what happens is we, we catch this shit and we're like, whoa, no, what the hell? You know how this is serious, man. It's killing people. I mean, I feel like I'm in a movie. It, it's it's really uh, it's crazy. Man. It's really nuts. And uh I just uh, I just pray to everybody we get through this together. You know, I'm hoping that I feel bad for the people that have passed. I'm I'm hoping that it was a little bit more than just the coronavirus. Um, you know, because uh, this is crazy. It's 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 pretty it's pretty bad. You know, <clears throat> there's like you know I'm looking around. It's like how is how's everybody surviving? Like what's going on? You know, businesses are closing. Schools are now talking about closing for the rest of the year. That's crazy, you know? Um, I understand it, though. I'm not saying, oh, they shouldn't close the schools. Oh, hell no. Kids, keep our kids safe, man, you know? A um, little worried about my daughter, you know? Um, of course, my kids, both my kids, but my daughter, because she's uh, in Europe, in Germany, and she works in the hospital in the morning. She's in the Army. So I'm hoping that, you know, if anybody's safe, I'm hoping that she's safe. I'm hoping that they're on their game, you know, and God forbid if something does strike, you know, she's already in the hospital. So, and she knows the doctors and she knows the nurses. She's a nurse. She's a tech nurse. And um, yeah, I just I just pray for so many people, man. You know, it's a, it's a wonderful world that we live in. It really is. We, all of us are so, so freaking fortunate to be here. It's... It's incredible. It's, you know, you guys got to realize, man, like, 
I've heard someone say this once before, and, they say, and, it, and it, it's, it makes so much sense, man. You know, your parents had sex, and there was like a billion freaking sperm cells, and that one sperm cell that fights, that fights to make it to the egg and makes the egg, and the egg hatches, and that was you. That was you. One in a billion. You're here. How crazy is that, huh? I bet you, know, but you never thought about it like that. But it's true. You know, what, what gives us that, that privilege to be on this earth? What, what is it? Why are we here? What is it that we have to do? You know? I mean, people say, oh, you have to, you're here to praise God and to preach the gospel and to do the, and I'm a huge, I have a lot of faith, man. I'm a huge believer in the almighty, no joke. But I don't believe that that's all we're here for. They say everything, everything is here servant to God. And I believe that. Everything bows. Everything bows to God. Think about it. The trees grow when every year when they're supposed to grow. The leaves fall when they're supposed to fall. The sun comes out when it's supposed to come out. The rain drops when it's supposed to drop. The leaves regrow when they're supposed to grow. The flowers grow when they're supposed to grow. The ocean moves in a certain direction. Those, the wind moves in a certain direction. Those are all things that are, are servant to God. They're doing what God says. They have no will to say, you know what? I don't feel like doing this today, God. You know what? I'm not going to do this. I think I'm going to, I'm just going to chill out today. Uh, that's, that's the sun. The sun's going to say, yeah, I'm going to chill out today. I'm not coming out. <laughs> you know? So, um, it's, um, you know what? I don't feel like, I don't feel like raining this year. I'm not going to rain anywhere in the world this year. Nah, man, they don't have that. They don't have that choice. The only beings on this entire planet that have a choice, that have a will to say yes or say no, do good, do bad, make a left, make a right, um, are us, humans. We're given that, we're given that, that ability and uh, I bet a lot of us never even thought about that before. But we're the only ones who have that ability. Dogs don't even have that ability. Dogs and other animals, um, they move on instincts. It's the way, it's their nature. They learn how to bury a bone because their ancestors have been burying bones for centuries. You know, they learn, birds learn how to make a nest. They didn't read a manual, it's instinct. It's part of their being. It's just like, we know how to pee. <laughs> you know what I mean? We know how to pee. We probably don't know where to pee, but we know how to pee. We know how to blink our eyes. See what I'm saying? Right? We walk through there and eyes, all of a sudden our eyes blink. You know, those are, those are things that we have no control, that we, those are by instinct. They, we don't really control those. Um, if we get scared, we jump, instinct. You know, um, if we have a scratch, an itch, we scratch it. That's instinct. Who, who tells us to scratch it? You know, we could just be standing there and all of a sudden the itch comes on and we go crazy. We're like, what the hell is this? What am I doing? But no, we know how to reach over and scratch it. Or for us fat guys, man, we go up against the wall and scratch our back. <laughs> but, um, but those are instinct. But other than that, you know, Everything else, we have the right, we have the ability to choose, and it's wonderful. So we are extremely fortunate in so many ways. And you know, with tragedy now, I don't have any tragedy currently in my family, and I pray that I don't, and I pray that none of you do either. And when it does happen, you know, I'm probably the first one that's gonna be a mess. But now that this is not the situation for me, I can, I can understand. I can understand, you know, you know, how to be grateful and how to, you know, how to kind of look at the world and look at everything and, and just realize that we're here for a very short period of time, you know. Most of us won't even make it to 100, most of us. A lot of us nowadays can make it to 80, that's becoming, Pretty, um, pretty common, 
80 is a pretty decent number for a lot of people. Um, definitely 70s, a lot of people may, even people that don't even take care of themselves are living to 70, you know? I know, I know several, <laughs> you know, who are living to 70 and they, they, they really don't take care of themselves at all, you know? Um, but you know, it's a short period of time that we're here. So what do we do? What do we do while we're here? You know, family is always number one. You know, it's, it's, you know, the family unit is an incredible, incredible gift that has been given to us. Think about it. Really, really think. Think of the connection that you have with your family members, with your kids and grandkids, with your parents, your, your siblings. Think about that connection. Think about how devastated you would feel if something happened to them. However, a friend or a neighbor, yeah, you'll be sad. Probably really sad. But you, there's a good chance you're not going to lose your mind. However, a family member, especially an immediate family member, oh, yeah, a lot of people. There's some people that take themselves out because of it. That's a very special connection. What's the purpose of it? You understand? It's like a tribe, man. It's like, you know, so when people say family or they consider you family, that when people say family, that's what I think about. You know, I got people that are like family, but when I really, really dig deep down inside, they're not quite family. I'll be extremely sad um, if something would happen to them. And they'll probably feel the same way with me, but I don't think I will lose my mind. Not like if it was my family. I have a friend of mine that was uh, Webmaster Dave. A lot of you guys remember him. Me and Dave went back years, man. We were cool. We came over here. We did a lot of work today. And one day he met some, he met, he met somebody. He met some girl. And I think he met her online or whatever. And in like a short period of time, they ended up, you know, hooking up and they wanted to live together. He moved. I don't forget where, Virginia or Georgia or something. And he took off. And that was one of my best friends, man. And, and it bothered me more so, more so is like, Wow, I thought I knew you, you know? Sometimes I can't, I would say, you know, I can't blame him, maybe the girl, but no, man, I can't even do that. I can't even do that, you know? So, but, but think about it. Now, he dipped. I haven't seen him. God, I, we might be going on two years now that I haven't seen him. I was, I was sad. I was sad. I was disappointed because I was like, wow, you know, this is somebody like the only dude that's outside of my family that I allowed to stay in my house when I wasn't here. That allowed, that I, let, I felt trust enough to, yo, can you pick up my daughter for me? My daughter. Do you know who you must be in order to pick up my daughter? You know, to, to give you my credit card information so you could finish purchasing some stuff that we're doing. To give you... The, the passcodes to some of my my work to give you you know access to my stuff because we're working together. I mean, there has to there's a level of trust that has to be there in order for that to exist. Okay. However, he dipped. I haven't spoken to him or seen him in probably two years now. I was a little upset, but hey, you know what? I wish him the best. I still got love for the brother. But if I never see him again, oh well. Good luck, man, good luck. Maybe we'll run across each other's uh, path sometime. However, now if this was my family, if this was my son or my daughter or my wife or my, my, my grandkids or my nephew Eddie or any, and they did something like that, I would lose my mind. I would totally lose my mind. I would have to go look for them. Now, if it's an uncle, like a distant relative, okay, well, whatever, man, good luck. But I'm talking about my immediate, my, my immediate family. You know, my immediate family to me consists of my brothers and sisters and my nephew and nieces. You know, that's, that's, that's the, that, it stops pretty much there, you know. Yeah, they're kids too, but they can handle their kids. You know, I have to, I have to draw a line at some point. So I leave it at that. Never, of course, never wish anything bad on anyone's children. But what I'm saying is that they're going to live their life. 
you know, just like with my kids, if my my uncles didn't see them again or whatever, you know, they're like, okay, well, they're probably doing well, <laughs> you know, they're living their life, you know, but I'm talking about, you know, my immediate family, you know, I need to know where they're at at all times. I need to have a connection with them. I don't need to speak to them every day. I don't need to be up in their house. They don't need to be up in my house, but I need to know they're there, you know, so, but, um, you know, it's very important, very important to me. But, you know, these are the things, you know, you know, times like this that we're going, you know, with what we're going through with this whole coronavirus, you know, this, these are the things that I start to think about. Now, I could be the only psycho thinking about this stuff, you know, start thinking about, you know, why are we here, our purpose and how easy it is for this earth or at the very least this country to totally go upside down like like shit could just I mean it could be real bad you think scientists can't create a virus that can spread and clear this country in just a few maybe a month or a few weeks oh, of course they could do that of course they could you know it's called chemical warfare so, you know, I, I believe all that. I believe that that can happen. I, I pray that that doesn't happen in my generation or any generation that I'm attached to right now, you know, which includes my kids and grandkids, you know. After that, I have no, there's nothing, I'm not going to know them. So it won't affect me at all. You know, do I want to see any of that happen to anybody? No, absolutely not. But it's hard to sympathize for people who don't exist right now, you know. But, um, but yeah, so that's, that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's what's been going through my, my head lately, you know, and, um, I don't talk to too many people about it. I talk to you guys on the podcast about it, but you guys never answer me back. So, <laughs> but, uh, uh, it's just some of the things that, you know, remember what I told you, man, every night, man, I have these thoughts that go through my head and I kind of just want to let them out, you know? This podcast says it's good night freestyle because most of you guys are into freestyle. You're either fans or um, you know me or we're, we're somehow connected to that genre. Um, so when I say good night freestyle, I'm, I'm talking to you. You're freestyle to me, you know. So it's not about the music. Uh, my whole life is wrapped around the music. So uh, I don't sit there and eat, eat freestyle or bathe freestyle or every show I watch on TV is freestyle now. But my, I'm, I'm engulfed in this genre. So... Um, but sometimes I don't want to talk about it. Sometimes there's not much to talk about it. Sometimes there's other things that I think might be important at that moment, you know, to talk about it. So, but, um, you know, think about what I'm saying. You guys can probably articulate it a bit, you know, better than I could. Um, and, uh, you know, just realize that, you know, we're, we're pretty blessed even with all this that's going on we're, we're, we're pretty blessed yeah I mentioned the other day I think it was yesterday they, each one of us is like our own book it's like a library you can have all those thousands of books those, those books are the same that's us man we all these different books we have our own stories inside we have a certain amount of chapters the chapters can represent our life how many years we're on this earth you know or our milestones or you know things that you know you know, what, 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 what consists of a chapter in your life? Is it, you know, your ages as you go? Or is it through milestones or through accomplishments or through stages? Like, okay, so I graduated, boom, milestone, okay. Uh, I got married, boom, milestone, okay, cool. I had my first kid, boom, milestone. Oh, I had my grandchild, boom. Oh, I started business, boom, you know. So those are your milestones. So those could be your chapters, you know. But think think of your life as, as, a, as a story, as a book, you know. Um... And if you take from this point on, because remember, anybody who's going through shit right now, that you've probably been through worse already. You probably have been through worse, okay? And think about how you feel right now. Now you look back. And sometimes you look back and you realize those situations, you're like, wow, I never thought I would overcome that. I never thought. But now you can actually, it becomes a part of you. It becomes a part of your character. You, the way you handle that situation speaks volumes of the type of person you are. Think about it. People who have suffered 
tragedies after tragedies and, and, and hardship. But they still walk around with a smile and they're still willing to help the next man. And they still have hope and they still, you know, and they still have faith. Think about what their character is like. What kind of superhuman person is this? You know, it's crazy. But then you have those who suffer the stock, the stock market uh, collapses and they jump off the roof. You know, it's crazy. The, you know, the stock market crashes and they jump off buildings. Crazy. Of course, we don't know what the situation is, but sometimes when they did stuff like that, it's still embarrassment. Um, then you have those who come here because of mental health. I'm, I'm very aware of mental health, and I believe it is a problem. Um, and uh, I believe it's something that can be tackled. And I think it's important for people to be aware of mental health issues within themselves as well as those around them because you cannot wait for someone to look depressed to think that that's, those are the people who could possibly, you know, take themselves out or, you know, do something that can be really destructive. Those are not the people. Sometimes it's the opposite people. It's the people who are walking around happy as shit, you know what I mean? Those are the ones you got to be careful. You have to look for the signs, you know, so. But anyway, guys, I don't want to make this a depressing uh, podcast. Um, but I just want I just think it's a serious situation. And I think it's a time for us to reflect and kind of kind of think about it. I know there's a lot of you guys that are going through situations. I'm going through my own. Believe me, I have my own list. And you might say, oh, I'll tell you, you're probably not going through anything where I'm going through. Oh, you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. You know, I just, um, I try to take one day at a time. I'll tell you a trick too, all right? This is very, very important, okay? Whenever we have issues, a lot of times we tend to look at all of our issues in one, like one clump. Don't do that. Do not look at your issues as in one clump because that will drive you nuts, okay? Start with the issues that you know you can eliminate quick. Start with those, even if you have to write them down, and go and tackle those. Find the easiest ones first. Don't go and tackle the hard ones because those might take time. But if you have 10 serious issues, a lot of times those 10 issues are bills. <laughs> okay, here's my 10 issues. The light bill, the rent or mortgage, the car note, <laughs> food, da-da-da-da, you know what I'm saying? So figure out how you can tackle those, find the one that you can tackle easier because now you take those 10 issues and you bring them down to nine and then eight and then seven. And then next thing you know, you're stuck with three issues. However, these are big issues. <coughs> but now you can focus a little bit more and still, even with three issues, do not think of all of them at once. Find that one, the next one you want to tackle, push the others to the side, tackle it. And go at it. I've been. I've learned to do this on my own. Nobody taught me this. I didn't read about this. I had to do this for myself because there was a time a few years ago that I was shit was getting rough, and I saw a change in my business, and it got me a little nervous. And I was like, okay, I need to figure this out. And that's exactly what I did. And I kept on realizing that. I kept realizing that. Um, that, so I see a flash of light, man. Hey, do we have a curfew out here? I don't even know. <laughs> but anyway, um, so um, I'm sorry, guys. I'm just looking down the street, and it's like a flash of light. It's weird. But anyway, uh, yeah, so, you know, I, I went through it, and what I did is I just took that situation, and I broke it into small increments, and I tackled them. And not only was I able to tackle them, just the fact that I separated them, each one didn't have the strength that they came, that they were as a whole. You understand what I'm saying? So when you think of everything together, it's almost like a rock. You know, it's almost like, uh, it's almost like I can smack you in your face with a dollar bill, right? It won't hurt much. But if I take $500 bills, put a rubber band around them and smack you in your face, you're going to feel it. You know, same situation. So if you take those situations and you separate them into separate bills, they're going to be flimsy and you'll realize how, how weak they really are and that they are not, they will not be the cause of, of any serious 
destruction in your life, you know. So keep that in mind, guys, and, you know, I hope something out of all the bullshit I talked that you guys got something out of it. Um, and at the same time, it's my own, it's me talking to myself and reinforcing in myself that everything will be okay because I'm right there with you. I feel it. You're not alone. I know I'm not alone. Um, and uh, I'm just praying that, you know, not just us, but this entire country comes out a lot stronger at the end. So, all right, God bless everyone. Have a good night and good night freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.